Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here from kibbyking77.com and today Google released an update to the Android M developer preview. If you're on the first developer preview, then it will come as an OTA update. That might take a few days to get that though. They do have factory images of it. I'll link to those in the description if you want to flash it on your device right now. Now I have it on my Nexus 5 at the moment and when I installed it early, earlier today this morning, I didn't think there was going to be much to it. I thought it was going to be mostly bug fixes, but there's a decent amount of features that were added to this preview, which kind of makes me more excited about Android M. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of those new features. I'm going to run through all the ones that I noticed. So let's get to it. All right, so here's a look at the first update to the Android M developer preview. If you missed my first video on it, I'll link to it in the description if you want to check that out. But you'll see I'm on Android version M. Here is the Easter egg right here. Still no indication on what Android M is actually going to be called. However, there is something that might show what the build version is actually going to be. I'll talk about that in just a second. All right, right away there's changes to the home launcher. And right away you'll see the app drawer is different. Here is a look at what the app drawer looked like on the first preview. This is an Idle 3 right here, and this is a Nexus 5. Uh, you'll see you had letters on the left side, you had the suggested apps up at the top as well, but there's not as many apps. You'll see you have four here instead of three. I really like the update much better. And then you'll also notice you have a scrolling bar which you can actually scroll quickly alphabetically through these apps. Now you can also do that with widgets, so press and hold on the home screen, go into widgets, and you'll see it's very similar right here. You can swipe through if there's more than two. Uh, left and right, but also you can go quickly between them. It's a really smooth and great animation. I really like it just and you can go through autumn uh, alphabetically. Now you can also get rid of these suggested apps that are up at the top here by pressing and holding going to settings and you'll see show predictive apps. You can untick that and then in the app drawer you'll see up at the top there are absolutely no suggested apps. Sometimes I needed to do a reboot for that to actually show up so if I'll check it I don't know if it's going to actually show up. It did. So you'll see there they're back those predictive apps. So nice that you can customize that. Now going back into those settings there's another one that's allow rotation so that's new. Check it out guys on my home launcher I can now use it in landscape mode and also even the app drawer as well interesting little animation come over to the right there and you'll see I can just scroll completely in landscape mode so this is a really nice update as well for those of you that like to have your home launcher auto rotate now there have been some changes to the settings here so let's go into settings I scroll all the way down if you go in developer options there's an option to show system UI tuner and standard quick settings you can change you can move these around um, it works pretty well to move them around uh, status bar as well. This is a new one. This is really cool actually. So check this out guys. Let's say for example, I don't want that Wi-Fi icon and uh, the cellular data icon up there at the top. So let's uncheck Wi-Fi. There you go. It's gone. Um, cellular data unchecked. There goes that empty SIM card icon. Really cool. You can kind of customize if you don't want an alarm there. Do not disturb Bluetooth. All of those various icons and they show up right away up and down as soon as you check them. So really cool. And then there's also an embedded battery percentage right there. So go ahead and check out the battery icon and I'm gonna check it and there it is. So you'll see my battery's at 31% right now. And then you'll notice a demo mode down here at the bottom. I'm gonna actually enable it and show demo mode. Watch the clock. It's gonna change to 520. No matter what time it is, it'll show full Wi-Fi, full mobile data, and then also 100% in the battery. That's for app developers, I believe, for them to take, when they take screenshots of their apps for the uh, Play Store, it'll just go ahead and show that. Now, speaking of screenshots, let's go ahead and take one. Volume down and power, and then you'll see it'll save it, saving screenshot, and once it's saved, you can delete it straight from the notification tray, which is really nice. You can share it as well. But deleting it's really great if you accidentally take a screenshot that you don't want. You don't have to go into your gallery and delete it. Now another update into the settings, let's go back into it, is storage. So you'll see they actually call it storage and USB. Gives you an idea of how much storage you actually have on your device and also what is taking up each. Now you'll see you have an explore option down there which takes you to essentially a file manager of your internal storage which is really nice. Obviously, it has it, having a built-in file manager is something that Android's needed for a long, long time. Let's go back, and then if you go to certain ones, let's say you go to images, it's gonna show you those specific images without needing to go into the gallery, etc. You can view them straight from this specific file manager. Now, another setting that they actually added was memory. That was actually embedded into apps, but it's been rehauled, I guess. So you can see uh, the average memory usage 
with three hours, six hours, 12 hours, one day. I haven't used it for that long even, so I can't even change it. So you'll see right here, you have performance normal, how much RAM is used, average percentage, and how much is free. And then you can actually determine which apps are using how much RAM. So really interesting to see Android OS up at the top as it probably should be. So uh, really, really cool that they've added that. It might not matter to a lot of users, but to some people that means a lot. All right, and those of you that watched the Android M keynote, they talked about now on tap, which really isn't in the operating system just yet but they're starting to throw it in there. If you go in, into settings here and go to now cards, there's an option for now on tap and it brings up this goofy screen that says opt in on tap. We know how ugly this is. Yeah, we know we get it and you can opt in, but that's really about it. I haven't really found a way to actually start using it. I don't think Google has actually activated it just yet. And then for those of you wondering, the latest update to Snapchat actually crashes on the M preview. If you install a previous version, it's going to fix the flipped image. Uh, when you take a picture, it doesn't flip the image. So for those of you wondering about that, and that's really about it. And you can uninstall apps from the home screen. That was actually in the other one, but I think that's a really neat feature that I wanted to talk about again. So there we go, quick un uninstall, not having to go into the app drawer, which has been updated, yay. But anyways, that's it. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you out. If there's anything else that pops up that I missed, I will post on social media. I might make an annotation as well right now. So follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Subscribe to me as well, it'd be really awesome. I'll be doing more updated coverage in Android M and other things. So subscribe, and that's really it. So thank you very much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and have a good day.